this probably goes without saying, but materials matter. I mean, have you been for a ride in any concrete planes lately? <laughs> yeah, nope. When it comes to thermal management in our system designs, materials matter too. A lot of us jump straight to worrying about how many fans or heat sinks we have to bolt onto our widget without considering the huge impact that materials can have. Well, let's change that right now. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. My guest today is Amal Ristemi from Panasonic, and we're going to talk about some fantastic new materials for thermal management. Check it out. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about thermal management materials from Panasonic. Hi, Amal. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm really great. Thank you for asking. So one of the toughest problems for us as system designers is getting heat out. It seems like we're always worrying about the functional aspects of our system. And then at the last minute, we find out that we need to start adding heat sinks and fans and copper. It sounds like you guys have some new technology that could maybe help me out with this problem. Absolutely, we do. Panasonic is proud to say we have a thermal solution called the pyrolytic graphite sheet. Basically, this is a synthetic graphite sheet that has a high thermal connectivity in the XY plane, in plane connectivity, it has a lot of flexibility as well and allows for engineers to use it in many different cases. Okay, so carbon to the rescue again. Basically, yeah. What kind of performance can I expect with PGS graphite sheets in my system? So what makes Panasonic's PGS graphite sheet very unique is that it has an extremely high thermal connectivity. The thermal connectivity ranges from about 700 to 1,950 watts per meter Kelvin. If you use copper as a benchmark, PGS could be about five times more conductive than that. Okay, so tell me about this flexibility. Seems like that could come in really handy. Absolutely, yeah. We've seen that save a lot of engineers. So there is a, another product called the natural graphite sheet. It's not as flexible. PGS, because of its crystalline structure, allows you to bend it and use it around very curved surfaces, which many engineers find very useful. So Amal, talk to me a little bit about applications and how you actually use this technology. It seems to me that it would be pretty versatile. Yeah, I mean, there, you know, it's not a black and white use case scenario, so to speak. One example of using this is in the case of thermal diffusion, where you could take the graphite sheet, absorb heat from a heat source, and evenly spread it out. Another case is heat transport, where you're bridging a gap between a heat source and a heat sink, and you could transfer heat accordingly. Another case, you could use this material just for simple heat reduction, just driving heat away from a heat source. So how do I know what thickness I need for my design? So we have a lot of different thickness offerings, ranging from 10 to 100 microns. Because this is a semi-custom case, it's best to speak with a person like myself or another person who's knowledgeable about this. Help us understand your requirements, your design cases, and then we could start with one thickness and then follow up accordingly based on how results go. Okay, let's talk about my printed circuit board a little bit. What do you have that can help me out there? So PGS isn't effective in every single case. And with that said, you'll have cases where you have rough, uneven surfaces. And for that, we introduced a material called the semi-sealing material. Basically, this is a thermoplastic resin material with PGS adhered to it. Now, how does this semi-sealing material work with my board? I'm used to thermal interface materials. Right, right. So using a PCB is a great example. Basically, you could have a PCB with components that have uneven heights. What the thermoplastic resin material does, a semi-sealing material, is after you apply heat and pressure to it and apply it to the board, it conforms to the different components, right? It reduces what we call thermal resistance. And you're able to absorb heat from the different components evenly spread it out to the PGS, which then accelerates heat transfer to the heat sink. Why wouldn't I just want to use PGS then, Amal? You know, again, it's uh, PGS unfortunately doesn't come to the rescue in every case, right? You'll have cases where the surface roughness is too high, and that's why we have created the semi-sealing material, which is adhered to the PGS, just to kind of work as like a, a handicap or an accelerator for heat transfer. Okay, Amal, let's get down to some serious numbers. <laughs> Have you got any real data for SSM? 
Of course, yeah, that definitely does come up a lot in discussions with engineers. So with the thermoplastic resin, you know, the material itself has a thermal conductivity of 1.6 watts per meter Kelvin. Compressibility could reach up to 40%. But what's interesting, again, is that, you know, you have the heat slowly dispersed throughout the material, and then it just rapidly shoots out of the PGS once it reaches it. So you have a, a unique dynamic there. Okay, these two products sound great. Uh, what else does Panasonic offer? Sure. So we have this one great product called the Soft PGS, which is basically a slightly thicker, more compressible version of our standard PGS. This material has a thickness offering of 200 microns. The PGS, as I mentioned before, has a very good in-plane connectivity, XY connectivity, whereas this material functions well in all axes, X, Y, and Z. It exhibits a little bit more compressibility up to 40% and also creates very low thermal resistance use cases. And we see a lot of attraction to use this material for IGBT modules. We have a lot of major manufacturers who are interested in using this. Okay, what else? So we have another great product called the graphite pad. And what's unique about this material is it has a very, very strong Z-direction connectivity capability. Gap pads typically range from one to five watts per meter Kelvin, whereas this material has a thermal conductivity of 13 watts per meter Kelvin. It also has high compressibility characteristics. It could go up to 60%, and the thickness offering range is unique as well, where we could offer thicknesses from 0.5 to three millimeters. Okay, I'm curious, Amal. How do you guys go about making this stuff? It's pretty interesting, actually. So we use our founding father, so to speak, product, the PGS graphite sheet. We grind it up into little flakes and we mix it in with a silicon resin, form it out into a sheet, and then we take every little flake oriented in the Z direction. And that allows us to get the high through plane conductivity. Now, I've heard about a material called NASBIS. Can you tell me more about it? It's a pretty interesting product. So all the other products I've mentioned to you before, transfer heat, conduct heat, whereas this product isolates heat. NASBIS stands for the Nano Silica Balloon Insulator Sheet. It's very similar to PGS in that for a very thin material, it has high performance characteristics. But what it does is it isolates heat. So what kind of properties would we expect with this? So a product that has very good isolating characteristics will typically have a low thermal conductivity. Our thermal conductivity of the NASBIS material can get very low down to 0.018 to 0.026 watts per meter Kelvin. So an example of how to use this material is you'll have a heat source that might be close to an area that's sensitive to heat. So you'll apply the NASBIS to prevent heat transfer from one area to another. Great. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Amal. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about thermal management materials from Panasonic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out the Chalk Talks section of eejournal.com or head on over to YouTube, keyword eejournal. <laughs>